are not a medical institution, we are not a psychological institute, we are a business school. So what we are interested in is the application of neuroscience to leadership. And that's what we are going to talk about today. We have to be aware that there are many schools of thought. So political scientists talk about leadership. Sociology, sociologists talk about leadership. Psychologists talk about leadership. So to some extent, what we're starting here is to see what, what new angles can we research to understand better what, is, what are the basics of it, what, is, what are the infrastructures. Uh, teamwork has been also researched by, from very different angles. And understanding better, adding a new perspective to that, this is why I think, on the one hand, it's particularly relevant. Now, the second thing, if you link that to our training or to the role of business education, it only adds to, the, to our interest as a business school actually demonstrate live here on stage uh, how this technology works. So you're going to be in for a really interesting experiment tonight. Students are supposed to, to self-survey, basically, in order to get their understanding of leadership. Then the actual group tasks, and this is what you see here on screen. So this is the brain of students in action. So if there's red here, you see a lot of action taking place um, in terms of thinking, engagement uh, with the group task. Uh, studies and literature around um, um, neurofeedback, basically. So you could use this method potentially to enhance the leader's ability to become a better leader. But that's the future. It might be something for the future. This is possible, in essence, if you know what you're trying to enhance. I've dealt with all kinds of leaders from a, a number of industries, from government, in a number of different countries. And sometimes when I talk to leaders, and sometimes, like, for example, in 360 feedback, processes, sometimes I get the feeling like, wow, this guy or this gal really has it together. They know what leadership is all about. They are inspiring. They are visionary. They've got passion for what they do. All the things that we, they have integrity, the things that we tend to associate with good leaders. And then there, the, then there are other people, and I ask myself, what in the you-know-what is going on in their heads? What is it? Now, it used to be that it was always a figurative thing for me as to what's going on in their heads. And so finally this technology came along and now literally I can ask this question, what's going on in their heads? Maybe there's something there. We are used to being in control. The first thing you have to learn about neurofeedback is the brain is in control and not you. We just take information from the brain we connect it to a computer that figures out all types of electrical impulses and dynamics of the electricity that is produced in the brain. We can take a look at something called transformational leadership, differentiate people that are terrible leaders from people that are exceptional leaders, figure out what a mathematical formula of the brain is like, and actually pretty much take somebody's brain map and identify them on the scale by only using uh, basically EEG. She's going to do it and we're going to have a live simulation soon on stage, so you're going to actually see it applied. What we, what we did was designed a very simple system with just a few sensors that we saw were the most relevant sensors. And instead of doing visual or auditory feedback as Pierre talked about, we chose haptic feedback. The signal of the brain it's very identifiable, but it's actually kind of weak relative to the muscle activity and everything like that. So there's a certain bit of art to getting down to just the brainwave activity. What's kind of important to understand is there's not a whole lot of plug and play solutions or metrics or anything that you can just immediately take from one research application to the next. You kind of have, that's part of the fun of it. You got to figure out what's important here. Um, what do we need to do in order to give some meaning to it? And as Pierre said at the beginning of the week, which I think he said so well, we, we started this whole project to come here and record all of these groups, these group of people who don't know each other, who don't have assigned roles, and then kind of see how they interact with each other. I think what you have seen is that uh, we are deep into real science. <laughs> you know, it's not just applied science in a way of uh, educating our future leaders, but this is actually combining real science, neuroscience, with uh, the purpose of enhancing and developing our future leaders.